Russia has said that its military brought down four Ukrainian drones near Moscow and over the Bryansk region. One of the drones was shot down over a town that hosts Moscow's local government. The airspace over the Russian capital was briefly closed. Three major airports in Moscow suspended flights. Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky arrived in Athens on Monday. He met Greek Prime Minister Kyriakos Mitsotakis. Zelensky is all set to attend an informal dinner hosted by the Greek Prime Minister. European Union Commission President Ursula von der Leyen and European Council President Charles Michel will also attend the dinner. Greece has pledged to train Ukraine's Air Force pilots to fly F-16 fighter jets. Serbian President Aleksandr Vucic has said that Belgrade respects Ukraine's territorial integrity. The statement comes after he met Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky in Athens. Vucic said he had a quote-unquote good and open conversation with Zelensky. He added that Serbia had never sold weapons or ammunition to Ukraine or Russia, although it arms, its arms rather might have reached the battlefield via third countries. Chief of the Wagner mercenary group, Yevgeny Prigozhin has posted his first video address since late June. He is seen standing in a desert area in camouflage with a rifle. Reports say that the video was probably shot in Africa. Prigozhin said that the Wagner mercenary group is recruiting people and it will, quote-unquote, fulfill the tasks that were set. Brazilian President Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva has arrived in Johannesburg for the BRICS summit. Chinese President Xi Jinping has also arrived, while India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi will reach shortly. Reports say that the Prime Minister is the Indian Prime Minister is likely to meet Xi Jinping on the sidelines of the BRICS summit. Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa together form BRICS. Over 40 countries have expressed their willingness to join the group. Thailand has selected a new Prime Minister and he is not from the party that people voted for in the month of May. Lawmakers have appointed Shweta Thavison of Pew Thai Party as Thailand's next Prime Minister. This comes after Move Forward Party was blocked from forming a government despite a stunning victory in the elections. With the selection of the new Prime Minister, months of political negotiations have come to an end. Former Thai Prime Minister Thaksin Chinawatra has been arrested and jailed. This is just as he returned to Thailand from self-imposed exile after 15 years. The former Prime Minister made his fortune in the telecommunications business. He has been charged with abuse of power and several other criminal offences which he calls politically motivated. Chinawatra came to power in 2001 and was ousted in a military coup in 2006. Former US President Donald Trump has said that he will surrender to authorities in Georgia on Thursday. This is to face charges in the case accusing him of trying to overturn his 2020 election loss. This will be Trump's fourth arrest since April this year. Trump is still a leading candidate for the Republican presidential nomination. Zimbabwe's main opposition party, the Citizens' Coalition for Change, or CCC, held its final rally on Monday. Voting will begin on Wednesday. The CCC is led by presidential candidate Nelson Chamisa. He is also a lawyer and a pastor. Zimbabwe's current president, Emerson Mbangwa, came to power in the year 2017. This was following a coup that ousted Robert Mugabe. An Israeli woman was killed in a suspected Palestinian shooting attack near the West Bank. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has said that Israel would settle the score with the attackers. Israel has also blamed Iran for the recent escalation of violence in the region. Moving to climate, Japan has announced that it will start releasing water from the damaged Fukushima nuclear power plant into the ocean on Thursday. It will release more than 1 million metric tons of the treated radioactive water. Japan's Prime Minister Fumio Kishida said that his government was ready to take the necessary safety measures. 
the plan has been drawing criticism from Japan's neighboring countries and local fishermen. Meanwhile, China has strongly opposed Japan's release of the Fukushima water. The country's foreign ministry said this during a news briefing. Beijing said that Tokyo should dispose of the nuclear contaminated water responsibly. Tropical storm Hillary sent a deluge of rainfall to the American city of Las Vegas. This has triggered severe flooding in the region. A state of emergency has been declared in Clark County over the storm's impact on the city. Two people have died due to heavy rains in the South American country of Chile. Meanwhile, more than 26,000 people have been isolated and almost 34,000 evacuated. This is as per the country's National Emergency Service. The heavy rains have been occurring in mountainous areas. Chilean authorities say that this has increased the risk of landslides and mudslides. France has issued a red alert for four of its southern departments. It comes amid excessively hot weather. This is the country's most serious warning. It will allow local authorities to call off events and close public facilities if needed. High temperatures lingered in the Italian cities of Rome and Milan on Monday. Tourists and residents were trying to cool themselves as a new heatwave Nero hit the region. The heatwave is expected to bring temperatures up to 38 degrees Celsius. This could last for at least five consecutive days. Dozens of hospital patients have been evacuated in Greece. This comes as wildfires reach uncontrollably for the fourth day. Hundreds of firefighters have been struggling to contain the blazes that broke out during the weekend. Millions of people in the Canadian province of British Columbia were under air quality warnings on Monday. This was after hundreds of ongoing wildfires filled the skies with smoke. The poor air quality has increased concerns about its impact on human health. Climate change has exacerbated the number of wildfires in Canada. US President Joe Biden has arrived in the wildfire-hit American city of Maui. Speaking to residents, Biden recounted his personal loss. Biden's visit to Maui comes nearly two weeks after wildfires swept through the Hawaiian island. The fires have killed more than 114 people in the region. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un visited flood-damaged areas in the country's port city of Rampho. He lashed out at top officials over the lack of preparedness and a poor response to flood damage. The area was flooded after an embankment was destroyed by seawater due to shoddy construction. This flooding comes amid mounting concerns over a food crisis in North Korea. Moving to business and tech, S&P Global has cut the credit ratings for several American banks. It has also revised its outlook for the firms. S&P says that funding risks and weak profitability will likely test the American banking sector's credit strengths. Earlier this month, Moody's also cut the ratings of 10 American banks. Goldman Sachs is planning the sale of a part of its wealth business. With this, the company is shifting its focus back to serving ultra-rich clients. Last year, Goldman CEO David Solomon reorganized the firm into three units. The firm also scaled back its consumer business. American brokerage firm Charles Schwab is planning to lower its headcount. The company said that the move will help it counter pressures, cost pressures. However, it did not disclose the number of employees it was going to lay off. Charles Schwab also said it is planning to close or downsize some of its corporate offices. UK-based chipmaker Arm has filed for an initial public offering in the US. It will file for a listing in the Nasdaq stock exchange under its namesake ticker symbol. This comes five months after 
announcing it had filed confidential preliminary IPO paperwork with the US regulators. Analysts expect ARM's IPO to be the biggest of 2023. DP Eurasia will file for bankruptcy for its Russian business and exit the country. It is the operator of the Domino's Pizza brand in Russia, Turkey, Azerbaijan and Georgia. The move follows the company's failure to sell its Russian business in the country. Many Western firms have cut ties with Russia since its invasion of Ukraine and the introduction of economic sanctions. Roark Capital is nearing a deal to buy sandwich chain Subway for about $10 billion. This is according to reports. Roark is a private equity company that owns restaurants like the Buffalo Wild Wings. Reports said that a deal could be finalized as soon as this week. Social media firm Twitter or X is planning to roll out a new way of displaying news on the platform. It will now display news links without any headline or description. Owner Elon Musk says that the move will quote-unquote greatly improve the aesthetics. Meanwhile, some reports say the update aims to reduce the height of a post. This is to fit more posts on one screen. Generative artificial intelligence will probably not take over most people's jobs. It will instead automate their duties, freeing them up to do other tasks. This is as per a study conducted by the International Labour Organization or ILO. The study, however, warns that clerical work would likely be hit the hardest. And this will potentially hurt female employment. This is because the clerical sector is dominated by women. A US court has ruled against a copyright for art generated by artificial intelligence. The court added that art created by AI without any human input cannot be copyrighted under US law. Lately, the field of generative AI has raised concerns related to intellectual property issues. YouTube is launching an incubator to work with artists and musicians. The company is launching what is called YouTube's, YouTube Music's AI Incubator. It aims to explore the use of artificial intelligence in music. YouTube has partnered up with Universal Music for this project. It will work with artists such as Abbas Bjorn Ulvius, Ryan Tedder of One Republic, and the estate of Frank Sinatra. Moving to sports, in football, Spain's football chief Luis Rubiales has apologized for his actions at the FIFA Women's World Cup. Rubiales had kissed the Spanish player Jenny Hermoso during post-match celebrations. Hermoso spoke later about the incident and condemned it. Several government ministers and media commentators criticized Rubiales' gesture. The Spanish women's football team experienced a grand welcome after returning home. Thousands of fans gathered in Madrid to celebrate Spain's first Women's World Cup victory. The Spanish squad defeated England 1-0 in the FIFA World Cup final on Sunday. Fans wrapped in Spain's national flag took to the streets to dance and chant slogans. In the English Premier League, Arsenal beat Crystal Palace 1-0 yesterday. The only goal was a penalty converted by Arsenal captain Martin Odegaard. This was in the 53rd minute of the game. Arsenal were reduced to 10 men after defender Takehiro Tomiyasu received a red card in the 67th minute. AC Milan beat Bologna 2-0 in the Serie A on Monday. Christian Pulisic netted one goal in his debut match for Milan. A 24-year-old from the US joined the club last month. Milan's opener was scored by French forward Oliver Giroud in the 11th minute. English Premier League club Chelsea is set to sign George Petrovic from New England Revolution. This deal is reportedly worth around $16 million. The 23-year-old Serbian will compete with Robert Sanchez to become the team's first-choice goalkeeper. Petrovic has played 43 matches in Major League Soccer. 
Manchester United striker Mason Greenwood will leave the club. This comes after a six month six months rather investigation into Greenwood's conduct. He was charged with a rape attempt and assault in October 2022. This was after the allegations against him were made online. Charges were later dropped in the month of February. Man United said they will help Greenwood find another club. The English Premier League club Everton has condemned racist slurs directed at Amadou Onana. The Belgian midfielder was racially abused online on Sunday. This was after Everton lost their match against Aston Villa. Later the club stated it is conducting an investigation to identify the people who are responsible. They will also be supporting the police with any investigation. In tennis, world number 2 Novak Djokovic spoke about his new rivalry with Carlos Alcaraz. Djokovic said facing Alcaraz reminded him of the time he played against Rafael Nadal. He said it was like the time he beat Nadal in the 2012 Australian Open final. Djokovic took home the Cincinnati Open title after defeating Alcaraz in the final on Sunday. The match lasted for almost 4 hours. America's Grant Holloway won gold in the World Athletics Championship. The 24-year-old 24-year-old rather clocked a time of 12.96 seconds. in the men's 110 meter hurdles race this is holloway's third consecutive world title in 110 meter hurdles america's shakari richardson won gold at the world athletics championships in budapest richardson competed in the women's 100 meter race she clocked a time of 10.65 seconds to take home the title This is her first major title after she was barred from the Tokyo Olympics in 2021 after testing positive for banned substances. In the world of entertainment, K-pop band BTS's singer V released a teaser for his forthcoming music video titled Blue. The 23 second long trailer went viral among fans. The teaser shows V displaying his acting skills in an intense look. The music video for the song Blue will release on the 13th of September. Rapper Snoop Dogg's outdoor concert in the American city of Houston did not go as planned. At least 16 people were hospitalized due to severe heat. This was after temperatures in Houston city reached 43 degrees Celsius. After the concert, Snoop Dogg took to social media to wish his fans a speedy recovery. Another object has been thrown at a celebrity during a concert. The most recent incident happened with the rapper Drake. For the second time in the past few weeks, something was thrown at him. During his concert in the American city of San Francisco, a concert goer chucked a book at the rapper. However, Drake caught the book mid-air with one hand and said, "You are lucky, I am quick." Singer Bob Dylan has announced that the tour he is on will head to North America. The ongoing tour is called Rowdy Ways and is presently taking place in Europe. 17 new dates have been announced for October in Canada and the US. 82-year-old Dylan will perform in Canada after a gap of 6 years. The legendary singer is known for his hit songs like Just Like a Woman, Tangled Up in Blue and Like a Rolling Stone. Singers Billie Eilish, Dua Lipa and Olivia Rodrigo are competing for the top spot in the UK single charts. Currently, Dua Lipa's song Dance the Night leads the way at the fourth spot. Next in line is Billie Eilish with her song What Was I Made For. Rodrigo's song Vampire trails at number 6. The three songs are separated by just 1000 listeners. The top singles chart in the UK will be revealed on the 25th of August. Rihanna is officially a mom of two. The singer welcomed a second baby with partner ASAP Rocky. Their growing family already includes a 15-month-old son. After the birth of her second child, Rihanna said, and I quote, "My family feels complete."
actor Bradley Cooper has opened up about his struggle with drug and alcohol addiction. The 48-year-old actor said substance abuse nearly killed him back in the year 2003. Cooper says it really traumatized him and forced him to consider sobriety. The actor says he has now been sober for 20 years. Oppenheimer star Cillian Murphy says he wished he had played a role in Christopher Nolan's blockbuster movie Interstellar. Murphy said, and I quote, I adore Interstellar because I find it very emotional. Murphy has been a regular in Nolan's movies, starting with Batman Begins in 2005. He has also featured in Inception, The Dark Knight Rises and Dunkirk. Meanwhile, popular media celebrity and YouTuber Logan Paul said he could not stand watching Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer. Paul said, and I quote, I walked out of the cinema hall at half time. It was 90 minutes of just talking. This is not the first time that Paul has walked out of a Nolan movie. In 2014, he walked out of Interstellar after just 18 minutes. However, Paul said that when he re-watched Interstellar, it gained a spot in his top three favourite movies. And finally, model and actor Sam Usgari was seen without his wedding ring. This comes following news that Usgari has filed for divorce from singer Britney Spears. Earlier, Spears took to Instagram to talk about her divorce after 14 months of marriage. Spears and Usgari first met on the set of a 2016 music video called Slumber Party.